everybody welcome back to another episode not of the nerd gen report but of the nerd gen review being that the shows are back we're going to be giving you our thoughts on the shows we're going to do a show on the nerd gen review and this one is going to be obviously on loki just came out today and brian first of all i'm your host pablo and joining me as always is mr brian schultz to discuss the, the goings-on of this this fantastic MCU universe. Brian. Brian, 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 Brian. I think we underestimated, in my opinion, this show. I saw the first episode, and I had to watch it again. And there's just so much in there to dig out from what we just saw and i am truly truly excited to see what comes up there because because other people have who have you know the 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 hookup have seen two episodes the first two episodes and they're saying that the next one is even better and what did you think of this first episode that was good i thought the format was more traditional this was the most traditional setup of the three Marvel shows I thought that we had so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I mean by that is this, they, 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 they wove in Loki's decade history in the MCU. You got the flashbacks at the opportune times. You kind of had this fish out of water. We're going to drop, basically going to drop the audience and the, protagonist in the middle of this new situation that he doesn't understand and we're going to fill in a little bit of the gaps around him yeah um you know we get we get the owen wilson intro and then at the very end we're going to have a cliffhanger we're going to tease what what we're here what we're ostensibly really here for what we're all about the multiple version sort of pursuit spoiler yes yes um and then we're sort of left go ahead by by the way this is a spoiler review so yeah so if you haven't seen it look away come back later continue yeah. so we're obviously led to believe that the character we see at the end i guess is is maybe him maybe it's not maybe you know it's or alternate him but but yeah no i thought the for the beats and the formula were very like what you would expect from an adventure sort of um sci-fi type of show where the other two shows i think try to do at least something a little different at the outset, especially WandaVision, obviously. Yeah. So that, that was interesting to me. Um, I thought the pacing was good. The show really moved, considering yes. that, again, that there was you know no real action, right, other than the replay of action we had seen before and a little bit of fun and games inside the TVA. This was all exposition, and uh, and yet it was they, – they were – moving you along like he was in different rooms he was meeting different characters he was reliving his life like they were really packing a lot in so i like the pacing there um and yeah i mean i think that i think they dropped enough kernels and crumbs to where you're like all right i want i want to see where the rabbit where the rabbit hole goes and then you get the payoff of like oh wait he's actually hunting himself and if that's a face value reveal i think that is obviously a pretty interesting premise right the idea of like you're doing this i don't know spy or espionage type of thing through time but you're actually pursuing another version of yourself yeah Yeah. it's kind of almost star trekky to me though yeah yeah play that out so anyway i don't know what what did you think like what jumped out to you the most that um what's it what what was her name miss minutes yeah i paid attention to that because the clues are there and i may be going way ahead but from what i um deciphered from that were a few things so she mentions that there was a multiversal war right and and there were countless of unique timelines going um fighting for supremacy and this is where it gets a little bit hazy in terms of the history, the time washing, if you will. The timekeepers emerged. Right, correct. I believe that emergence is actual the actual winner of that war, whom then created the time variance authority just to maintain that timeline. 
And I, I believe these these multiversal wars is, is simply a, a, another name for secret wars. And I think um, her explanation of what variants uh, the variants are capable of doing, if not stopped, will cause the multiverse to go mad. It will be madness. So hence, Doctor Strange 2. This is all leading up to Secret Wars. This is the beginning of that storyline. And uh, that's what I, I took from that explanation. I liked also the constant questions or the questioning of the Time Variance Authority from Loki when he arrived at the, I guess, the, the court. Right. Like, who are you? Who are they? And he was asking a lot of questions, very intriguing questions. And, and then, you know, sort of uh, scoffing at this, uh, I guess, the what, what are they called? The, those three entities, what were they called? Do you remember? Which three? The, the 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 guys that are uh, uh, dictating how what that that single timeline is 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 is, is uh, uh, happening there. You, well, you mean the three that are pictured in the yes. in, in the movie. Yes, yes. Well, we, we talk about. I think Kang is one of them, right? You, do you think Kang is one of them? They haven't really. I thought, uh, I thought that was supposed to be him. There's references to like in the statues. Mm -hmm. It looks like I, I think I think it's if it's not him, I think we're they're making it look a lot like he, what he's supposed to look like. Yeah, some people are saying some people are definitely saying that that it could be that it could be uh, Kang the Conqueror. We still don't know yet, but he questions. This is sort of like it reminds me sort of like the Wizard of Oz. Who, who Wizard of Oz? Who is really truly behind all of this? Right. Right. Uh, so that I think is something that we uh, will possibly get get at the end of this series. Who knows? It may be one of those things where we thought Mephisto was a part of um, the true yeah. uh, culprit behind Wandavision, and we never really get to to get to find out who that person was, other than Agatha Harkness. But obviously, we I, we believe that there's someone behind all, the whole thing of this. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the show very, very, very much. And I thought, listen, I thought at the beginning of this, I thought Owen Wilson was going to be corny and whatever. And he was actually great. He was actually very good. What did you think of him? Yeah, he was. Um, as expected, he was his Owen Wilson oh, self. Oh, yeah, definitely. The voice, the delivery, the talky, rise talky. Sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, I mean... That the voice never ages, his shtick never ages. I think what remains to be seen is can that hold up over the duration of the series? Because it's just it's going to be longer than your average Owen Wilson movie when you step back. And so, yeah. for me at least, his comedy and his delivery have always been something that I enjoy periodically. Like, whether you know, like I come into Wedding Crashers amazing but if you'd maybe watch writing crashers five times in a row i don't know that i'd be stoked by the fifth time there's something okay. about that i find a little bit repetitive so yeah i am curious to see is he going to be in every episode doing exactly the same thing or is his character going to evolve is this his starting place and are we going to see some evolution because the promotional material pretty much clipped this episode for him like pretty much every line now we can kind of see like every line in the promos and the trailers it's that in this episode, delivered yeah. was in the first episode yeah which means there's obviously a lot more material that we haven't seen so that that i think is a, is a question there um what do you think of tom hiddleston like the tweaks and the changes to his character which i thought were actually notable in this episode um, I think what was very interesting to me is um, the questioning from Owen Wilson to him and why he does what he does and then showing him stuff that he hadn't seen or didn't know because he, you know, he, for him, this is all new to him okay. and seeing what, what was supposed to be 
and seeing where he ended up, you know, I think he did a good job in displaying those emotions. Okay. So, I think in the next episodes, we'll get to see a lot. It's going to be very interesting to see much more of him and how many different, and what his range will be and what kind of um, character he, how his character is going to evolve, evolve. So that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. My favorite part of the episode was him watching the highlights. Yes. Yes. Because that was the breaking. He, he's always been this cocky, self-assured, arrogant, you know, sense of inevitability, right? Even when he, yes. as Owen Wilson says, for someone who's meant to rule, you lose a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, even, but he's always got that attitude of like, yeah, my but my victory is inevitable. It's just been yeah. delayed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, in that video, you see the shift where he sort of watches all the highlights and then he sees how he's supposed to have died, which we already know as long yeah. as we already lived that. Yeah. And so you see, you know, what, what clearly was genuine emotion, not sort of faked Loki emotion. Yeah. And then it pivots to this realization of when he sees the Infinity Stones basically in a drawer, almost wow. like toys, right? Where yeah. he's like, wait a minute, my whole universe and what I conceived of as power and what I was aspiring to was nothing basically yeah and yeah. like and so i think that was actually the, the the highlight of the episode for me um and definitely you see like you know tom hiddleston playing it more dramatic playing it more like his theater background than than um than the loki we're we're used to seeing so that so that was pretty good um oh i gotta ask a question for easter eggs though if you think uh -huh. we're getting i wonder i wonder are we getting deked or are they just are they just having fun or are we going somewhere with this mm -hmm. nightmare do you think that was a real reference or not because they play it up like even Owen Wilson's like, man, I'll help you burn that that place. I'll help yeah, you burn yeah. that place as if like is that what I do. I, the character somehow is. I do. I do believe that's yeah. a reference to something that we may see in Doctor Strange too. Uh, yeah. Um, one of the things when I saw the the Infinity Stones inside the drawer, and they and how. The, the one of the uh, employees called in paperweights and stuff. Not that it diminished the events of Infinity War and Endgame, but it all it sort of helped you move forward from that. Somewhat. Yeah, I agree. I thought the point, I thought the intent of that from a show writing perspective was to illustrate how far off the track we already were. Because it was kind of like Owen Wilson shows him the events of uh, Thor Dark World, which is what we know to have been the actual timeline. Yeah. Right. So we, basically, we go back to 2012. That's where things kind of splinter, basically. So we know that in 2014, Thor the Dark World comes out. Freya dies because of um, yeah. the Dark Elves and all that sort of stuff. So I thought that was a carry forward of okay, that entire timeline start, what had us on the path of Infinity Stones and, and Gauntlet and Thanos. And so seeing in the drawer was kind of like this illustration of, yeah, we're, we're, we're a long way from that. Like, we shouldn't care about yeah. that as much. Or we should only care about it insofar as we are actually striving to get back to a place where that happened. You know, so, yeah, uh, yeah. so I thought that was kind of the, the illustration of that. And I think it's, I think it's a good to if you're going to revisit characters who were in that storyline to not lean on those things a lot. Yeah. Like I'd have been disappointed if like the time stone was suddenly playing a major role again. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to do exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that was cool. Um, what else sort of um, stood out? Um, especially towards the end of the of the show, was there anything in particular that 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 made you look forward to seeing the next episode? Well, I had one little concern, which was we spent time in, I think it was, we spent time in three different centuries, I believe, in this mm -hmm, episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope the budget was there 
to show us a little more period accurate stuff than we got. Like the, the scene that's in the 1500s, you wouldn't have known it was in the 1500s. Like it's, they're standing in basically a church or a building and the kids, show, like that could have been the 21st century yeah, other than yeah. the label and you could have fooled me. And even at the end, they're in a, ran, a nondescript field. He lights the fire. That could have been- I got you, point. I got you. I hope that this show leans on, if you're going to go to the history of Marvel and the history of the world, embrace that like i want to see like if you're going to go renaissance period make it a little renaissance like just give us a little bit more of that that was one mm, little thing yeah. that i flagged is like i hope we're not cutting corners and just going to be in rooms and dark places and saying it's the 1700s or the or the 2600s or wherever we're going to go there was one commercial where you see loki i think is in the middle of pompeii exp uh, the Mount vesuvius exploding if i'm yeah. not mistaken so we might get a little bit of that but overall, man, so far, so good. And they keep on, unlike the first episode of WandaVision and the first episode of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, where the first episode of WandaVision is a little, you know, n we don't expect action. We, it's, it's very completely different. Let's call it that. Mm -hmm. um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier gave us, we're back at Marvel again. Right, the action sequences, the visuals, beautiful, right? And this one, more familiar, yet more curious to see where things go from here, because there wasn't any action, but yet it was familiar. Whereas with Wonder Vision, there wasn't any action, and it was very unfamiliar. We didn't know what really was going on. And this, we are still, we we're in tune with what's going on, but just this new identity or new entity that is uh, uh introducing themselves and we got a lot of education in that first episode of what's going on and who are these people so i really enjoyed that and i'm looking forward to see how far the tva because it's quite possible and i think most people would agree that the tva may be the antagonists and we just don't know it yet or they're on both sides yeah i mean there's you know owen wilson maybe on one side and other members of the TV and the other. I think the other thing I'm hoping for, because they, they've really broken, they use one episode to really break Tom Hiddleston down, right? Bring him off his pedestal. Yeah. I hope he, I hope we see the, the, the trickster aspect of Loki rebuilt as we go through this. So we're used to some of his Asgardian slash frost giant ish powers throughout the series. Hope we get some new tricks. He obviously yeah. has no tricks right now. He's kind of been removed of all of that, but I hope as we unleash him in the timeline, you know, we don't just rely on the knives or don't just rely on his sort of disappearance and sort of ability to assimilate other people. I want to see other tricks because he does yeah. have other tricks and he has had other tricks in, in the comics and, and in the mythology. So yeah, that's that, a that's, good call. That, yeah, that's that's another one there. Other thing I'm just sort of keeping note of is um, so Kevin at Feige had said in his latest interview in terms of connectivity, he said this show had the most connectivity yes. of the three, which I'm guessing is multiverse driven. That's the obvious mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. that would be the case, but you know, a notable comment, uh, nonetheless. And the other thing to keep an eye on is, um, uh, Michael Waldron, who is the lead writer on this show is obviously writing Kevin Feige's star Wars movie too. So I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, keep an eye on that as like, all right, this is the guy who's going to give us a star Wars movie. Like, how do I like the writing? And the, I just said the pacing and the dialogue was snappy. So I, I thought that was a pretty good, pretty good first effort. Yeah, and and the guy that that and he also does work with on on Rick and Morty, correct? Yes, correct. So they got you know an expert in time traveling and and really trying to keep things, the plot holes to uh, a minimum. So uh, yeah, man, I enjoyed Loki. I where did we have it? I think you had it very low on your list. I had it very low. Yeah, it mainly, that, like I said, mainly due to I felt like. A little bit of Hiddleston fatigue, and I I liked his beginning to end. I just didn't feel like I wanted to touch that. Okay. Yeah, um, I think I had it higher than you. Correct? You did. Yeah, yeah I got to go back to that video. I think I have. I think we both right had now. it in the bottom half. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you had it in your top four. We we only ranked eight at the time. There's yeah. obviously more shows now, but I think I think I might have had it seventh or eighth, and I think you might have had it like maybe fifth or sixth. Okay. 
Let's see where it ends up on our list, man. We got to revisit that list once all of the shows have come out. Um, that'll be a good show. Critics to do. love this one, though. This yeah. has gotten the highest grades of the three. For what it's yeah. worth, yeah. Yeah, Loki was very good. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised uh, at this show, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. Tell us what you think in the comment section below. What you thought of the first episode of Loki series, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time on the next Nerd Gen review, the Loki series.